Dr. Neri? Yes. Can you hear? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, we are ready to see your great performance. Please introduce yes. your case and your team. Yeah, yeah, nice, uh, nice to meet you. Uh, my name is d e h i r i from s u n c h e o n University, Korea. Uh, let me introduce my colleague, Dr. Uh, Jonso. Uh, mm -hmm. Good to see you. Dr. c h e o l h y u n Yes, uh, now let me introduce today my case. Okay. Yeah. A 50-year-old male was admitted for uh, upper chest pain in other hospital. The coronary angiogram showed a total occlusion at proximal LAD and significant stenosis at distal circumflex. Distal circumflex region was tented, but proximal LAD total region was failed. Then he was referred to our hospital for CTO-PCI. Next. Yeah. His risk factor is a diabetes, uh, hypertension, and smoking. And next. Uh, echocardiogram showed Uh, normal elbow systolic function with uh, ischemic insert of RCA territory. Okay. Okay. Uh, now uh, let me uh, show the previous failed case. Uh, this case was performed uh, last year, uh, December. Uh, okay. Uh, can you see the angiogram? Yes, next. 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 개인을, 개인을 좀 약간 콘트라스트를 좀 주세요. 콘트라스트를 좀 주, 잘안 보이잖아요. Dr. Neri, yes. this case is a failed case, am I right? Yeah. When, when, the, when the last trial was tried? Uh, about five months ago. Five months ago. The, This, December uh, 6th. Uh, mm. can, you, can you see the... This, uh, this film? Yes, we can, we can see yeah, clearly. Yeah, can see. Yes. We can see. Yeah. Uh, at that time, uh, in other hospital, uh, only one guiding catheter system might be used. And maybe this catheter was a m p l a t u t i p e Next. 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 And uh, the operator tried to pass the wire uh, with the microcatheter system. I don't know which wire was used at that time. Next. Next. Maybe uh, this wire, I think this wire entered the septal lumen. Next. And he tried uh, microcatheter dye injection. And the dye was uh, uh, successfully filled through this lumen. Next. Uh, next. Yeah, next. And uh, uh, at the time, the, op the, the operator um, tried to pass the wire uh, into the digital tool, but he failed. Uh, uh, next. Uh, maybe this wire was located in the first room. Mm -hmm. yeah. Next. 마지막인가요, 이게? 네, 그런가요? 네, 예. So, um, firstly, I think this case was not so difficult because the segment was not so long. And uh, the microcatheter uh, somewhat got into the tool room eh, of the uh, CTO body. But the first operator didn't uh, did not use the contralateral dye injection and uh, maybe vigorous a n t e g r a t e d dye injection uh, might uh, make uh, the uh, dissection and uh, 
he failed the procedure. Now, uh, let me show today angiogram. Talk to you, sir. I think this yes. highlights to the audience one of the key things is that the major reason of failure in that case was not having two guides. And it's interesting at this day and age when no real CTO operator would ever do a case without two guides, <laughs> that's still the primary failure mode. So I think it's really important, even if you're going to do this ad hoc, it still obligates you to use two guides. Okay. So uh, the first time... Uh, Contractor light injection uh, must be uh, required at the time. Now, today's case, uh, simultaneous dye test should uh, somewhat connection between LAD and RCA collateral flow. Next. Next. This is left. Monoda injection and uh, next. Uh, next, yes. So now let me uh, tell you, let me t uh, uh, please tell me how to, how to approach this case uh, panel. Uh, I want to hear uh, your opinion. Mm. Is there any question or the opinion from panel? Yes. <laughs> I think what this shows, just what Dr. Harding came off the panel, is that by ballooning in the first case, that they have changed the anatomy, that this is now essentially a functional occlusion. There's a microchannel connecting across. Um, however, you do have to be careful wiring those, so he's got to be very careful in his approach to wiring this. But Clearly, there are multiple options here with both wires, anti-grade mm -hmm. reentry, and a retrograde technique. So they should help facilitate the efficiency of these procedures as there are multiple options to cross and take care of this. I'm excited to see how Dr. Lee has approached this lesion. Okay. Uh, because there is some um, connection, uh, I choose the integrated approach. And the microcatheter is a fine cross. And the, the first wire is uh, Sion Blair. Yeah. Now I'm going to start the wire, wiring. Mm. Are you Ukrainian? Yeah. Are you Ukrainian? Cotton 80. Yes. Is there any specific reason to choose the Sion uh, Black uh, to uh, this uh, situation? Uh, this is a, a polymer, a polymer jacket. Hydrophilic mm, wire. This is my favorite wire for micro channel tracking. <laughs> They are doing simultaneous. Simultaneous, yeah. Mm. Uh, I see. Uh, go to the yeah. septal channel. Okay. A bit closer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things, is if the wire yeah. continues to go into the same location, one of the things you have to think about in here, especially when there's a fairly good channel, is that the mm -hmm. tip shape may not have enough reach or length. Okay. So one of the things you have to be, as you saw, he brought in his microcatheter, covered most of the distance where he has the lumen. Now he can go out and reshape the wire so that he can yeah. more appropriately pick the true lumen instead of the septal. <laughs> one of the things yeah. you, you don't want to see is people doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. Something must change. Yeah. Now I reshape the wire tip. The wire repeatedly enter the septal lumen, so I change the wire tip. Mm -hmm. 
Chairman, uh, Chairman, uh, uh, comment. I have uh, good morning. I have a sheet from Yokohama, Tokyo, uh, Japan. So uh, maybe what I'm commenting is a uh, uh, chip injection from the uh, Android approach. Mm -hmm. It's very, it maybe it's a bit clear to the connection or not in the mm -hmm. mid of CTO. Okay. So. Yeah, I think. You know, I would, I would probably uh, take a different approach. I mean, that's why you have the collateral channels to look. And doing a tip injection, you, you either prove you're in or you wreck the vessel. You make huge hydraulic dissections if you're wrong. I mean, if you want to, the other way to find out you're in the Trilumen is to use a spring coil workhorse wire. So something like a Xeon Blue or a Pro Water or a BMW. Because a spring coil wire in the, in the false lumen will not go. But it doesn't cause a large hematoma. It doesn't take away for potential other yeah, options. Yeah. And that would be the one, one yeah. thing I would talk about with the audience here is the choice of a polymer jacketed wire when there's a channel, those wires have a higher preponderance to get subintimal without telling you. Because of the jacket, they're very lubricious, so you have to be a little bit more careful with them when you're wiring lesions like this. <laughs> So I'm sure Dr. Lee will, will figure this out with integrated wires, but these are cases, interesting enough, where retrograde can be a simpler way to approach the lesion just because the angles and the physics of the approach to the, the lesion may be simpler. So I think even though it looks like a relatively straightforward occlusion mm -hmm. segment, having that retrograde prepared with a 90 centimeter guide and the equipment and the skill set to do it, it may allow you to make for a more efficient procedure if we continue to struggle with anti-grade wiring here. Dr. Neri, in the very first view of angiogram, there mm -hmm. is no direct connection. Oh, okay, I, I, I think. I think. Mm. Uh, uh, please uh, show again uh, previous angiogram, AP cranial. Mm. Dr. Neri? Yes? Another room, Dr. Muramatsu, are ready to okay. show the, his performance. Yeah. So keep going, please. AP cranial, that's a good AP cranial. Dr. Muramatsu? Yes. Can you hear? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Let's introduce your case and team, okay, please. Okay, case. Introduce, please. Okay, I'd like to introduce our case. Uh, a 62-year-old male was admitted for the evaluation of abnormality in CT with uh, health checkup. Uh, echocardiogram showed a preserved LV ejection fraction without any reasonable abnormality. The coronary angiography showed proximal LAD CTO with uh, good collateral from RCA. As a, a coronal risk factor, he did not have any uh, traditional risk factor. Uh, next slide. Um, he had uh, uh, only diabetes, and, and there are no pr prior medication for the uh, hypertension or hyperlipidemia. Actually, his uh, clinical presentation is silent ischemia. Uh, next slide. Uh, we check echocardiogram, and we did not check psyllium spec or other functional examination. And Dr. Muramatsu will uh, introduce uh, angiogram. Yeah, today the NGO. This is a bilateral injection and the LAD CTO with calcium. And the epicardial channel came from the uh, uh, RCA, good epicardial channel. And uh, next. 
LAO Planner. So the CT length is not so, not so long. And but with the bifurcation of the uh, diagonal branch. Next. So this is the uh, LAO Planner. Next. And this is uh, yeah, also a Coranio. Next. This is a real Coranio. So, any, any opinion from the discussion for this case? Good morning. Uh, I'm, I'm Ashida from Yokohama, Japan. Murawa Sensei, can you hear me? Yes. So yes. Uh, maybe uh, it, it channel is very good for intervention, but uh, I'm afraid uh, if you, you use uh, epicardial channel, uh, ischemia is all right, I'm afraid. So I tried the first attempt with the approach from diagonal branch. I checked that. I passed from diagonal branch. But there is a classification in the opposite uh, entry point of CTO. If the uh, entry point of CTO, there is a match match classification, I try the recruiter approach. But ischemic occurrence, I, I'm afraid. OK. Very important point of view. Any other comment? Yeah, I think there are a lot of uh, options in treating this case. You could certainly do it as a primary retrograde wiring with reverse current bailout. You could do this with IVIS guided anti-grade wiring. There's enough calcium you probably could do it without IVIS to see what's going on. There, you know, there's an excellent landing zone of the LAD as the diagonal is already open. So you could do uh, a variety of forms of anti-grade management with either parallel wire, anti-grade reentry with a stingray, or IVIS guided reentry. Um, I think this is sort of a, a dealer's choice. You know, it's a fairly short segment CTO. The cap is well defined. The lesion's well defined. There's lots of options. So, I, th I think this will be a great teaching case. There's so many options. It'll be interesting to see how you approach this for the audience to learn. Okay. So my my concern is the uh, railway the channel is very very big, as you can see. So it is possible to interventional uh, collateral channel. Uh, however, uh, basically, uh, anti-grade approach is, uh, if possible, uh, trying first is my, my style. And uh, if I use the, the retrograde channel, it is necessary to use the small uh, shaft micro -cassette. for example, Carvel or fine cross, not Corsair, because uh, uh, preventing uh, ischemia. But anyhow, so I try to integrate the approach. I, I'm a little bit afraid of uh, the calcium. It's very huge. So first of all, I try to the general wire for negotiate to the integrate. So as you can see, the proximal LED is also very tight stenosis. You can see that. And uh, this is uh, the general wire. Before CTO uh, stenosis, it is quite, quite difficult to pass because of, because of calcium. And uh, I'm trying to change uh, XDR. And the XDR easily, luckily, easily go down through the CTO is uh, maybe we can have uh, some micro channel like this one. So how do you determine when to use fielder XTR antigrade versus XTA antigrade? XTR. I, I understand, but so when do you use the XTR versus the XTA as your antigrade wire? I'm not uh, many experienced to using the XTA. Uh, basically, I use the XDR is very often because uh, XDA is uh, less popular in 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 the international market, and so sometimes limitation to available availability in the XDA in the international market. So, but the XDR is a very more popular, easy to get get uh, available. Okay. 
maybe XDA is a little bit higher uh, tip weight, but uh, in this case, it is not, not necessary to higher tip weight. Wire uh, automatically go into the micro channel in the, in the CTR portion. However, um, XDR is uh, now uh, go down to the distal LED. However, uh, small balloon cannot cross because of heavy calcium. So I, I, I change to the another, another small balloon. Okay. So I use the 1.0 balloon. 1.25 balloon cannot, cannot cross. <clears throat> Yeah, so this is, uh, you know, as Dr. Harding was talking about earlier, one of the things at least we've tried to do within the CTO community is look at a lot of different algorithms for solving problems. And so this would be wire across, but device will not go through the cap. So, you know, one of the options here is to improve guide support, especially with a calcified lesion. Um, so I'm sure Dr. Mermatsa is thinking about either a guide extension using a uh, guideline or a guidezilla or potentially an anchor balloon to try and improve guide support to help facilitate if this balloon does not track across. Great. So I use the 1.0 uh, drag the balloon, can pass. Previous balloon 1.25 can now cross. Oh, this is uh, open? Would you consider so uh, yeah. switching out and rotoblading here because of the amount of calcium? Yeah, 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 yeah. It is uh, possible to necessary. I will, I will check I was, uh, beef, uh, after small dilatation. And then do you, do you tend to, to perform your CTO PC, or the remainder of the PCI on the fielder XTR, or do you plan to exchange that for a different wire? After, after the crossing, there's some device, I, I, I'd like to exchange a normal wire because XTR, the tip is a little bit dangerous. If we keep going to the small, small branches. And again, I think that's an important point for the audience that, remember, these are specific tools with specific purposes. Oh. So once they've done their job, Great. your job is to remove them and go back to things that are designed to do normal oh. intervention. Zero balloon cannot cross the CTO uh, whole body. So, are you going to use an anchor balloon then, or a guide extension to improve your guide support? Yeah. Anyhow, so I I'd like uh, uh, dilate the proximal, also proximal part is a uh, very severe stenosis. So that that stenosis is necessary to dilate by bigger balloon at first. So. It is better to use a guide extension.
well. Okay. Now, well. Yeah, so, you know, again, we, as we're talking about algorithms for solutions, so this again is a wire across device won't fall. So at least our routine practice would have been uh, one, a one guide extension zero. when he went in with the first balloon. It's very easy to use a guide extension. They're fairly inexpensive. And you can see how much his guide is backing out. So even though he's tried to use a very aggressive guide, so any way to, to improve that guide support and push will help him get across. <laughs> You know, other technologies are a little bit more old school new where we think about daughter catheters like Tornus or um, yeah. Turnpike has the Turnpike Gold. Uh, one of the other devices in the U.S. that's made a bit of a comeback is laser and laser on contrast, just trying to change the plaque compliance. And obviously, if he gets across and exchange wires, rotational atherectomy would be of significant benefit here. But for all of the operators out there, when you're doing these cases, what you need to make sure is that you have a pre-specified set of solutions to a problem because otherwise you're just going to keep doing the same thing over and over expecting a different results and that's really not what you want to do because to be efficient you have to change and you have to understand the physics or dynamics of what's going on in the case to find a more appropriate solution. Okay. okay, great. Now we can pass 1.0 balloon. Center. Maybe down. This part is a very, very uh, hard. Inflate, 12. So I dilate the 2.0 balloon on the, the proximal stenosis, so the, the support is uh, stronger than before. Inflate. Okay. Oh. Okay, to the robot room. So after that, I to the robot room, I will uh, check out by IBUS. Guide Rhino is a uh, Guide Rhino Guide Gira is a very effective uh, su supporting device, but uh, mm, for, for LCA region, uh, you you can always just, uh, uh, thinking about the circumflex is a jail by the uh, Guide Gira. So if possible, uh, the LCA region. The, the, I, I think a child cast is the final option because the circumflex ischemia uh, sometimes occurred during the uh, child cast uh, manner. You free? Six. Twelve. Twelve. Now. You free? Twelve. So are you planning that the IVIS is going to help you with uh, sizing the vessel or to make a determination of whether you plan to do rotational Yeah, and uh, location, yes, location of the calcium. Is it dilate? Yes. 
So if there's more than a 180 degree arc of calcium, your plan would be to do rotational atherectomy? Yeah. If, we, if necessary. Right. Dale? No? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. Huh? Uh, Different. Mm. In free. 12, 14. Okay. Dale? Maybe that mm -hmm. Now. Okay. So I will change the normal wire. Uh, Do you have a crusade? Crusade? Crusade. Crusade on the table? Okay. I'm trying to exchange a uh, normal wire using by the Kusei Kyaseta. And the two point five balloon, anchoring balloon. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ramazi, since I'm just curious, since you had a fine cross on the or a Corsair already on the table and you were planning to trap this out, why not just use the Corsair to cross and exchange through that rather than introducing the double lumen catheter? Yeah, because uh, first of all, I I introduced uh, the the crusade for the for the diagonal branch. Oh, okay. Yeah, but uh, who said it cannot cross because of uh, proximal calcium? Test right. Oh, this is the main, main branch. Part of the Very good the other cross yeah. Very good cross row. Okay. Broom. I'm putting broom. Two five. Matsu-sensei, what percentage of your cases are patients post-bypass surgery? You mean the CDO post-bypass surgery? Yes, sir. Not so many because, uh, you know, the, uh, in Japan, the, the PCI is uh, more popular than CABZ. Maybe 10, 10, 10 to 1 percent, 10 to 1, 10 PCI, 1 bypass, maybe. Do you find that those patients uh, tend to be different than non-post-cabbage patients? Post-cabbage patient is uh, usually very, very tough. Usually the, the severe atherosclerosis was already occurred. How about USA? Uh, so in open CTO, it was 38% of our procedures were post-cabbage. So most of our patients, actually in the United States, the biggest reason people go to bypass surgery is a CTO. So we tend to get a lot of RCA and circumflex post-cabbage CTOs with uh, significant amounts of calcium in post-cabbage. So the anatomy tends to be fairly uh, different than non-post-cabbage anatomy, as you alluded to. 
So how about the uh, usefulness for the crossbars for the post cabbage patient? Uh, I, I think it's, you, like anything, it's a solution to a problem. You know, we know that about 20% of our cases, no matter how good you are retrograde, you can't do retrograde. So in open CTO, it represented about 44% of the second attempts, and I can't remember, I think it was 30-something of the uh, primary attempts. But it's like any technique, none of these are perfect. Um, the challenge is with post-cabbage patients, you tend to have a lot more calcium and you tend to have a lot longer CTO occlusions. So you see a lot less successful both antegrade and retrograde wiring just because the occlusion links tend to be significantly longer. Ibis. Okay, I will check Ibis. Maybe it looks like uh, not necessary to load the pressure. <laughs> I will check. I will show you the IBAS findings and I will ask. Okay. The IBAS pull back from the distal LED. Pull back? Yeah. Yes, this is a diagonal. Yeah, heavy calcium, calcium butter. Some slit mm -hmm. is already uh, produced. Ah, this is a uh, calcium. Mm. And the proximal part is also some stenosis, but uh, can dilate by the room. Maybe here. Yes. Circumflex. Wow. Ah, uh, here. Yes, this part though is also, also a little bit hard to cross the wire. And this is the left main. Okay, so the review, please review the eyeballs. How do you, how do you think? Still there are some big uh, block border in the LA ostium. So do you think the crossover to left main or the, how about? Is there any opinion huh. from the panelists? So I, my, my recommendation is, uh, in Kashmir side, uh, um, uh, uh, there is no uh, severe calcification because uh, back side of the calcification, there is a, we, we can see the best, best structure. It means so there is no severe calcification. So maybe no rotor it, it is not, not mandatory rotor beta, is not rotor beta. So NC balloon or scoring balloon is good effective in such situation. And uh, there is a uh, one crack is uh, almost uh, zero o'clock, twelve o'clock. So maybe NC balloon, and high pressure balloon, or uh, scoring balloon is effective to to could open the vessel site. I can recommend. Any comment from panelist? Any comment on opinion? Can. Uh, uh Dr. Muramatsu, this is Haryono from Indonesia. Uh, my question is, uh, did you, do you open the uh, diagonal also? Because the, uh, they see that the, and then the, maybe you use, uh, uh, because the 
high calcification when you use the uh, cutting balloon or something like that. So instead of using a rotational atherectomy, would you think about using either a cutting balloon or an angioscore for predilatation of this calcified lesion rather than just an NC balloon? Muramatsu Sensei. Yeah. Would you, the question from the panel was, would you, instead of using an NC to predilitate or rotational atherectomy, would you consider yeah. an angioscore or a cutting balloon? Which do you feel will give you the optimum stent deployment for this lesion? Yeah, now the patient blood pressure a little bit down. So I need uh, dopamine. The pressure is a uh, 50. Dopamine, please. Maybe, maybe it's correct to do a retrograde from the right coronary to see Where? what is the situation. Retrograde angiography, the right coronary to see how is the situation, the distal part of the LAD, because I think there is some contrast remaining on the distal part. And also, maybe, maybe there's a problem with the right coronary for this low blood pressure also. To check the right coronary. The right coronary guiding is already removed. Ah, removed. Uh, oh. So at this point, maybe it's good to start quickly with the balloons to, to establish the blood in the left, in the uh, LAD, with uh, mm -hmm. non-compliant uh, scoring, whatever it is. Mm. OK, uh, dopamine. Second. Dr. Muramatsu, why don't we let yeah. you work and get this sort of situation clarified off camera. We'll go over to the other lab okay. and see what's going on there while you get this okay. taken care of, all right? Yeah. Okay. In another room, there are some accidents, so you must show the your procedure now. Uh, me? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, previous. Yeah, yeah. Back, back. Back, back. Back, back. Back, back. Back, back. Yes, I, okay. I test the small light test. There is some flow connection, but I'm not sure. Next. Next. Uh, so I change the guide wire uh, uh, for the more controllable wire and the more, potent, more powerful wire, Gaia second. However, uh, Gaia second, uh, did not cross the distal tool man. Uh, please show me the uh, patient yeah. CT. Uh, can you see the CT? Yes. Yes. Uh, there is a very, very severe hard calcification uh, CTO care. So the wire cannot, uh, maybe cannot pass the distal tool man. Next. So I put the Gaia second wire in the septal lumen and I use the parallel wire technique. Ah, not parallel, uh, uh, crusade by using the crusade double lumen micro catheter. Um, I negotiate the uh, digital tool lumen. Next. Okay, so I choose the bias third. Conquest and third. Next. Conquest Pro. However, the wire uh, cannot press the hard calcification proximal cap. Lastly, I choose the Conquest Pro 12. Next. 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 Next, next, much more please. Yeah. 
Yeah, this is Comcast Pro 12 and the wire uh, past the digital tool, man. Yes. <웃음> Any question? 자, 이거 와이어를 통과를 시켜야 되는데. 음. Step t 음. 블루는 안 가래, 방향이. 자, 발로 합시다. 아, 이거 좀만 와이어 조심. 음. 익스텐션? 와이어 빠지면 안 돼. 아. 익스텐션 주세요. 음. 같은일이 Please comment the must be careful the use of the Comcast Pro 12 special really yes. really hard wire. Is there any okay. tip and trick to prevention of the dissection or the vessel rupture for you? <laughs> very very carefully. And uh, one zoom. Uh, I uh, you must always watch the digital wire T. 있어요? 응. 연결했어 확실히? 아니 아니 연결해야 됩니다. 응. 불정 켜주세요 확실히. 어제도 뭐 shaping technique or shape shaping morphology or degree is also very same with another CTO wire such as the XTA XTR. What? Concast Pro 12. Also the, during yeah. the use of the Concast Pro 12, the uh -huh. shaping morphology, shaping degree or shaping yeah. diameter is also very same or the different with the different uh, different different uh, different. A p i t r a n a l is the very small t. Very small t. Yeah, very small t. Is very very. Uh. So I see. Touch test. Test. Yeah, I see. Uh. Test. Okay. Yeah. Take a second. Why you shooting? Good. Why? 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 Good. Yeah. Put it on. Uh, I wonder if the uh, balloon can cross the region. Mm. Okay. Tail, tail, w h cross the wrong o It'll be interesting when he crosses this and when we, when we get the IVIS to see what the passage of the wire and potentially why that very focal mm. spot was so challenging to cross. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, firstly, small, very small, uh, pre-dilatation balloon, I will use. Again, I'm sure what Dr. Lee is going to do here is he'll pre-dilate the lesion, he'll then go back in with his uh, dual lumen catheter, remove the, the uh, Convienza Pro 12, the Conquest Pro 12, because it's a very dangerous wire to work on, put a workhorse wire in, and then we'll get a nice IVIS image to see exactly what's going mm -hmm. on. And these are cases I think as you're doing more and more of these, it's very important to be critical of yourself and sort of understand what the failure modes and see if there are things in the procedure you might have done quicker or sooner that would have led you to success. Mm -hmm. I think right now many of the registries are far too focused on their success rates rather than focusing on procedural efficiencies and actually learning from them ways to eliminate steps or eliminate devices so that we have a much uh, uh, smaller number of choices to allow us to be more successful so that when we, we, we use the data to help us be more selective about what works. I will say one of the comments that, uh, that I've seen watching several of the cases is that in, in oh, there's an uh, over magnification used. People are trained to work in 16 centimeters or, or 18 centimeters. I think if you, if you practice and train yourself to work in 25 centimeters, a much bigger field of view, you'll actually find it easier to see the collaterals and easier to see the pathways of what's going on with the vessels. You'll also reduce the radiation dose between 30 and 50 percent. So I think one of the retraining processes we need to go through is really uh, working in larger field of views because a lot of the vessels are cut off here so you can't really see as well 
and you're also using a lot of radiation when potentially you may not need to. Dr. Nady, yes. we move to the Murabat Rep. Okay. Okay. Murabat, Dr. Murabat? Yes. Yes. Patient is okay? Uh, yes. Blood pressure is uh, improved. I don't know the reason why the pressure down to the 50. <laughs> now 110. I, I think potentially uh, it may have been related to when you cross the CTO, your wire was a little bit kinking out in the collateral, and because of opening the vessel, you have almost a, a tie of the flow anagrade and retrograde. So occasionally you'll see people get somewhat profoundly ischemic while you're changing the directionality of the blood flow, and or if you don't have things uh, dilated to overcome that issue. And I think this may be a situation where that occurred. Yeah. Is this an balloon? Yeah, I think, uh, how do you think? Uh, you can see the diagonal is also have uh, some critical stenosis from the proximal parts. So, but not easy to get in the balloon for the diagonal branch also. Hmm. Yeah, no. Hmm. So is it necessary to treat for the diagonal branch? I will show you the last picture. Okay. <coughs> so this is the last picture. So I insert to the protect wire for diagonal branch. And you, as you can see, the proximal diagonal branch has a critical stenosis also with a heavy calcium. So now I, uh, before stenting, I try to dilate by small balloon, 2.0 balloon for diagonal branch, but uh, 2.0 two balloon is uh, not so cross, not, not cross. Hmm. It seems like it covers a reasonable amount of myocardium. I'm not a huge fan of diagonals, but you know, it's, it's there's often a lot of criticism about some of the reentry techniques and loss of branches, and I think this is clearly a case where this diagonal with two bifurcations, and if you look at the territory it's covering, it would seem that we'd want to at least make some effort to to protect it and save it. Yeah. 1.5 barrel? 1.2. 1.2? Okay. Yeah. 1.2. Yeah, one of the other potential technical approaches you could have taken on this CTO was to wire the diagonal up front and do rotational atherectomy into the diagonal because you may have affected the calcium on the proximal cap of the LAD, which may have, again, improved the efficiency of this procedure as we've struggled with a lot of the calcium. And so I think just something to think about that there are times where actually doing atherectomy of a cap can actually help facilitate the procedure. And now, cross, small balloon also. I think this, mm. this. Uh, maybe the wire twist that uh, uh, balloon difficult to cross this uh, mm. diagonal. Okay. Uh, crusade, can I say that? Before the duration of the diagonal branch, could you uh, delete uh, LED with uh, NC balloon? Because maybe uh, after the duration of the LED with NC balloon, uh, product, modif product distribution is changed, I think. You could also do an uh, anchor technique where you're dilating oh, the no, LED. You could use yeah, that yeah. to facilitate okay. putting a balloon in the diagonal. Okay, yeah, no. new run through wire. Okay, I will try to the uh, the rewiring using by the 
d o u b l e main catheter because avoiding uh, wire twisting. Hmm? Hello, I'm uh, Dr. Chen from Hong Kong. So apparently there's uh, issues of uh, uh, suspected wire twisting. So apparently we can cross the balloon down to LED in case it's, it's passed. So I think we solve the issues of uh, wire twisting. <coughs> And, and your small balloon really uh, can't pass through the more proximal part of the of diagonal, probably in the mid LED instead in the true diagonal. And from the angiogram, I think the very calcified part is not really in the uh, ostium, but in the proximal area, proximal diagonal. So pretty much, uh, I think there's a much bigger diagonal up, uh, up, um, upstream, and that diagonal, that diagonal sec second diagonal is really not a big territory, I think. Uh, probably in case it really failed to... Yeah, I'm not, not so strongly uh, focused for this branch. I agree, but uh, if possible, I dilate a small balloon. So really maybe uh, pre-dilate again the mid-LED, we may be able to close the balloon the diagonal maybe. The crusade can pass Across the di the publication, probably the wire didn't really twist upstream. I have a feeling your wire is occlusive. I just think this case also highlights to people wanting to get into CTO PCI that crossing the CTO is only part of the game. That this is the most complicated PCI out there, um, and so you really have to have all of your skill sets in place. What wire are you using to get into the diagonal? Uh, this is a Lancer wire. Okay. Very tight. <coughs> this is the first diagonal wire. Yes, okay. And uh, anchoring balloon, please. Two Okay, 12, 14, 14. Okay, I removed the double Roman Cassetta slowly. It's interesting, in the United States, we just got release of what's called the Trapper Balloon, which is a dedicated balloon for trapping. Um, and it's really, really helped, you know, it's Made, you can basically trap anything in a six French guide. It's reusable. Um, it's a really nice setup. It's nice to finally see several of the companies now dedicating and making specific devices see, to help us facilitate piece. doing procedures yeah. like this. I believe Kaneka from Japan also has one. Yeah, I try and do this small balloon dilate. Maybe the wire switch thing is uh, uh, solved. Right. Well, 
Now, in free. Well, okay, down. Okay, the picture. Dr. Muhammad, yes. you have just the couple of minutes, so please explain your the plan for the stenting for this yeah. region, and we move to the another room. Yeah. Okay, I, I put the stent from the distal LED to the proximal, and uh, I checked the left main is uh, free of the plug, and so I trying to the put the stent from the proximal LED to the just behind the, the distal diagonal branch. And if the diagonal branch is flow is uh, uh, maintained, it's over. If uh, uh, diagonal branch flow is uh, diminished, I'm trying to the rewiring and trying to the kissing balloon technique. Okay, okay. Keep okay. going. Okay, thank you. Thank you Dr. Nady? Nady? Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> We are now uh, check uh, check the I was finding, okay. Uh, are you doing now I was okay? Yes, okay. Yeah. Yeah, just uh, just me. Uh, uh, circumflex, circumflex oh. coming from city of mm. direction. Okay. It is left main. Yeah, left main. Yeah, right. Wow. Now review. So I'm going to get it. I have to throw it there. Okay. Yeah. Please yeah. show the eyeballs again, please. Yeah, yeah. From yeah. the distal part of the region. Yeah. Distal part. Eyeballs live, please. Long, 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 yeah. 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 As you can see, the IBUS uh, distal part, uh, distal reference vessel diameter uh, is 2.5. And as uh. you can see, there is a large plug burden and uh. similar classification. And as you can see, a mirror hematoma, internal mirror hematoma. A 12 o'clock? Yeah. Uh, but no direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Internal mirror hematoma uh, shows, but uh, more, no dissection. And Truman, there's Truman and classific, central classific region, as you can see. Yeah, and no dissection. Yeah, Truman. And septal branch coming. <coughs> the small dissection, as you can see. Mm. Uh, small dissection, small dissection. Yeah. Mm. and reference vessel in 3.0. Pal pal yeah. Mm. It might be a, a couple region. Yeah. So couple region. Yeah. Mm. The patient is a uh, diffuse. Classic region, so uh, he's got a large plug burden from LAD O's to distal LAD. So we have to concern about uh, what signs of stent or length <laughs> of stent. Dr. Neri, we have to test only the several minutes, so please keep going fastly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, this uh, is Eredos. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There is large plug burden, proximal yeah. LED, LED, yeah. LED yeah. Okay. Uh, 2.75 or 누르면 되겠죠? Stent, stent, stent 뭐는? 뭐 있어? 어떤 거야? 어떤 거야? 선생님이 원하시는 거예요? 아니에요. 
Yeah. Why don't you take the final angiogram? No? Mm. Okay. Uh, because there is some dissection, so um, there is a possibility for uh, dissect, <laughs> propagation. Uh, so I checked the... Can you show the I contralateral injection, so uh, maybe the landing zone is uh, uh, mid LAD, just uh, proximal to the uh, distal septal portion. Uh, I select the 2.75. What uh, kind of uh, stand do you prefer? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Any, any stand? So this okay. Science? This Science. is a, a great trick for people, as you learn, especially when you're dealing with bifurcations, is sometimes using the contralateral guide. Mm. To inject to let you di to land the distal stent can be very, very helpful, especially when you're trying to hit a, 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 a bifurcation. I think the other thing that at times you have to realize in these cases is if it takes more than 90 seconds for you to ask for a piece of equipment and then get it, and you ask for 20 pieces of equipment, which in the CTO is not uncommon, that's a half hour of wasted time. So it's really important that you work with your staff and you work with yourself to make sure that you're getting equipment ahead of time and in the room so that you don't have to have a lot of downtime, which will affect your overall procedural efficiency, especially when you're in a retrograde procedure where the longer you're in retrograde, the more likely something bad will happen. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Dr. Nady, do you have yes. just only one minute, so please okay. the, explain mm. your plan okay. for the stenting and the mm. rebut your case. Mm. Uh, because there is a large plug burden proximal LAD to LAD uh, I think uh, the stand to proximal LAD and the LAD osteo. Okay, now check. S very, very soft. Uh. Okay, here. Uh. <coughs> That's it, okay. Yeah. So you can see the challenge that was going on with the antegrade wire is it's just a very large LAD and it was in a dissection can almost see the dissection behind the diagonal takeoff mm -hmm. now yeah. um, that was going on. So yeah. it was probably a lot of angles issues that he was struggling with. Mm. 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 Okay. Muramat, Dr. Muramat? Yes. Yes, the, also the, the time is gone, so we must wrap up the, this time. So okay. keep going your hard work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your great performance. Thank you. Great job.